Yes. Israel on the weekend was attacked by Iran, which fired more than 300 missiles and drones at Israel in its first ever direct attack on that country. Now, Iran up to now has paid other terrorist groups to attack Israel instead, you know, proxy groups, Hamas in Gaza, Hezbollah in Lebanon, the Houthis uh, in Yemen. But it felt that honour this time demanded it attack Israel itself after Israel a few weeks ago assassinated a top Iranian general in Syria. In fact, a guy directing some of these terror attacks on Israel, including, says an Iranian group close to the uh, the supreme leader of Iran, the October 7 massacre of 1,200 Jews. No wonder Israel wanted him punished. Naturally, the Prime Minister, our Prime Minister, is now, even now, demanding that Israel not hit back. We want to see uh, a caution exercise. But should Israel actually hit back? I mean, it sounds so serious, 300 missiles and drones at your own country, what, are you going to just sit there and take it? How would we react to an attack like that from, I don't know, Indonesia or whatever? But Iran made sure it was actually more for show. It warned it would attack. Plenty of warning. America knew when it would attack. Israel and the US and Britain all got ready. The British sent jets. Even the Jordanians and Saudi Arabians, uh, Arab countries, helped Israel to defend itself. And Iran fired only at military targets. Its drones took hours to get to Israel. By the time it got there, everything was shot down, except for two missiles, which caused only minor damage to an airfield out in the desert. No one at all killed. Joining me is the country's top foreign affairs writer, Greg Sheridan, the Australian newspaper. Uh, Greg, um, Iran only fired a few of its, relatively few, of its massive amounts of armaments. Hezbollah on the Lebanese border could have fired... 100,000 rockets and overwhelm the Israeli defence. None of that happened. Was this a real war or just for show? Uh, so it's a bit of a mixture, Andrew. Very complex. <clears throat> so I think it wanted to hit some uh, Israeli targets. I think they fired more than 100 ballistic missiles. A couple of those Which got serious. through. Yeah, a couple of those got through and hit an Israeli airbase, but luckily didn't do any damage. I think the Iranians are deeply embarrassed at how incompetent their strike was. They certainly... Um, calibrated this strike. As you say, they gave everyone notice. They expected that most of the missiles would be stopped. But they, I'm sure they thought that some more would get through than did get through. Um, I think they needed to show their militia groups that they themselves, the Iranians, were prepared to put some skin in the game. Also, their deter US deterrence of them failed. Their deterrence of the US worked. So they attacked Israel, whether, you know, with full venomous intent or not, and Biden's reaction is to tell Israel, don't respond, don't respond. He said, you Biden win, bank it. Yeah. Biden told Iran not to attack Israel, and they attacked. So Iranian deterrence worked, American deterrence didn't work. Very good point. So it's, there are some pluses and some minuses. I think Israel will strike back against Iran in due course, but they're going to let Iran stew in the technical failures that it racked up for a while. They're going to let everybody in the region look at that. A new yeah, demonstration. Right, I, I, I'm very much struck by this. If you were right, and it wasn't just a Potemkin attack, it was for real, or semi-real, like set yeah. warnings and all that kind of thing, but it wanted to be... That might explain for a start why Iranian television ran footage allegedly said, look what we've done, fire in the sky, things burning. It was actually a Chilean yeah, thing from that's Chile. Right. <laughs> footage that they'd pinched. Um, what they've actually announced is how, how helpless they are and how good Israel's defences are. Absolutely. So it, it's still very uh, unclear because if they ever decide to make the full strategic strike, they'll send a lot more missiles all at once and they'll get Hezbollah, the Houthis, the militias in sure. Syria and Iraq to fire all at once too. But I, I think um, what you're seeing... So the Saudis and the Jordanians both actively helped Israel. So what you're seeing... The, the Middle East has a natural system of two alliances, the Sunni Gulf states minus Qatar, plus Israel, plus the United States, against Iran's Shiite circle of terror, which also embraces some Sunnis like, uh, like Hamas. And what has stopped that from functioning well for Israel and the West is this dopey, idiotic policy that the Biden administration inherited from Barack Obama of trying to woo Iran into cooperation. 
So Donald Trump, and I'm not shy of criticising Donald Trump, Donald Trump had a much more intelligent and effective policy. Isolate and contain Iran and reassure the Gulf Arabs. America only has to do that. It wouldn't cost it one more dollar than it's spending now. And it's got everything it wants in the Middle East. I, I think that's absolutely correct. And uh, I think people should recognise uh, the protesters here seem to think that Israel's a pariah. What does it tell them that even after this Gaza war, you've got two Arab countries, Muslim countries, uh, including Saudi Arabia, which are actively helping Israel beat Iran, because obviously they fear Iran more than they fear Israel. Yeah, that's, you're absolutely right, Andrew. And not only that, the four Muslim nations, regional nations, Arab and North African nations, which made peace agreements and exchanged diplomatic relations with Israel under Trump, not one of them has broken diplomatic relations as a result of the Gaza war. Just... The, the Gulf Arabs really have no investment in the Palestinian cause, and they certainly have no investment in Hamas, which is part of the Muslim Brotherhood and is directed by Iran. But there will come a lot of moments of truth quite soon. I think the Israelis will strike back at Iran. That's just my guess. I don't have it, you know, any intel on this. I think they'll take their time. They'll let Iran stew in the juice of its technical failure. I don't think they'll hit the nuclear facilities, but I think they'll hit military facilities with missiles. It'll be deadly. It'll be quite different from this strike. And then Iran will face the conundrum, what it does then. Yes, and don't forget, uh, Israel's got a huge vested interest in stopping uh, Iran from taking that last step and getting itself a nuclear weapon, uh, because that could be a game-changer. Greg Sheridan, thank you so much indeed for your time. Thanks, Andrew.